question nine. So it's just asking me to differentiate it. It's product rule. Okay, you can see it's product rule. It's two things multiplied together. So let's say u is equal to the first part of it. And so v is equal to v to the minus 2x. So let's work out what du is. And that's just going to be 8x. And let's work out what dv is. That's going to be minus 2 e. Might have to do a little bit of chain rule to get that little part. Right. A product rule is u dv plus v du. And if we just piece all of that together, what's that going to give us? We're going to get minus 8 times this. I'm going to write it up here just so you can really see what I'm doing. So we've got minus 2 times this bit, and obviously times the e minus 2x. Um, like that. And then we've got to add the du. Right? So we've got 8x and then e to the minus 2x. Okay? Now, that's the answer, but if we have a look, we need to get it into this form here. So basically, they've taken out a factor of 8 and they've taken out e to the minus 2x. So if we do e to the minus 2x first, and then just see what you're left with. Okay? So that's going to give you, you've got minus 8x squared, you've got plus 16, I'm just multiplying out this part here, and then you've got plus 8x there. Now if we take out the factor of 8, just making it the same as this down here, if I then take out the factor of 8 as well, then they've written, my, they've written the x squared bit at the end because it's a negative. There we go, we'll put that at the end. And then I've got uh, 2 plus x, okay, which is which is where we wanted to get to. All right. Right now, part B. Part B says, hence find in the simplest form the exact coordinates of the stationary points of C. Now, if you couldn't do A, that's why it's told you this here. All right. We're going to need it. Right. What are we interested in here? Well, we're actually interested in trying to find out the stationary points. Well, it's when things are going to be equal to zero, isn't it? So what are we really interested in? We're actually really interested in when that bit is going to be zero, okay? This part just here, because that would make the whole thing zero. If I was talking about this bit being zero, well, that wouldn't, not going to work, is it, all right? Because if that section was zero, well, anything to the power of zero is one. So it's only this bit here that I need to consider. So all we've got to do is we've got, whoops, let's have, 2 plus x minus x squared equals 0. Now, what I tend to do here is I just switch it around. So I've got a positive coefficient of, um, of x there. So I've just multiplied everything by minus 1 effectively. And then I can see that I've got x and we're going to have minus 2 x plus 1. So x equals 2 or equals minus one all right now it was it said give the exact coordinates so i'm gonna have one that's got two at the beginning i'm gonna have one that's gonna have a minus one at the beginning and then all i've got to do is i've got to substitute these guys independently into the original function just here and if i do that if i put two in i'll get eight e to the minus four and if i minus 1 in, I'm going to get minus 4 e to uh, e squared. Okay? All right? So that's part B. All right? Just that. Now part C. All right? Let's go and have a little look at this. It's now defining two different functions, and it wants me to work out the range of possible answers. Now, this one's slightly easier, all right? Because I just need to know a range of answers. So if I think about the function of, of x, right? So the important point there is just that. Okay. So if I'm thinking about two multiplied by that, then I'm just looking at this point here times two. And then that would give me the range there. So that point there, 
was minus 1 minus 4 squared. Right? So the range of g, function g, must be simply two lots of this. All right? So it's going to be, and it must be more than or equal to that there. So two lots of that. Okay, there we go. Right, the h is a little bit trickier, all right? Because, well, one, it tells me this here. It tells me that x can only take a positive value. So we're only interested in this bit here. So it's not just got that plus three. I'm only interested in that part of of our function. All right, so I'm going to ignore this. So I need to know what that point is just there. Now remember, I know the maximum point. That's okay. I'm just going to jot that back in there for us so it's kind of on the diagram. And then this point, if I substitute zero into our function just here, that's going to give me... Um, that's going to give me, well, that could be a zero there, won't it? So that just be minus eight, right? Zero minus eight. Now it's a little bit easier, right? So I can think about the minimum end would be this multiplied by two, and there's also take away three, isn't there? Okay, so the minimum end of this is going to be minus 19. And now if I think about the maximum end, so the maximum end is going to be this. So the bit I'm interested in is that part just there. So remember, it's multiplied by 2. Think about what I'm doing. Multiply it by 2, and then I'm taking away 3 from the answer. So if I multiply that by 2, it's simply going to be 16e to the minus 4. And then I need to take away 3 from that. And then all I need to do is just to write this inside it. So we know it's going to be less than or equal to that, and it's going to be more than or equal to that figure. There you are.